Good afternoon. Today's guest of publishing is the famous and amazing author Pavlo Beliansky, an author who tore into Ukrainian literature thanks to social media, the author thanks to whom the bisons of Ukrainian literature have been publishing for many years and quite frequently. And they soon realized that they were not alone in this business and that a fairly significant figure had joined the fray and could easily take them down from the Olympus of Ukrainian literature. Today we're going to discuss everything with Pavlo Beliansky. So pull up to your TV screens and let's go to the show. Pavlo, here's the first question. A writer is quite a mature and a serious profession, a close clan, so to speak. Then some young spring chicken suddenly emerges onto the scene of the great literati and learns that hundreds of thousands of people are reading his works. How does it feel? You can't really get into the clan, but you can always start writing. What about getting into the clan? How were you accepted to the community of writers? Welcome to our ranks! I do not belong to any writer's community. I don't even know if such a community exists in our country. I've heard there is one. They say that there are writers who write books, and then suddenly some Pashtet, some Pavlo Belyansky, comes out of nowhere and instantly becomes very popular. That's something from the pop culture field. Writers are horrified, as I might imagine, but still. What I like about literature and writing in general is that it's not a sport. You can't run a hundred meters faster than everyone, become number one, and make everyone else say in horror, my God, he's the best, my personal best is 9.5, and he's going to beat it by 0.3 seconds, he's so cool. All in all, you don't consider yourself a classical writer yet. If you put a lot of various books in a row, be those written by Dostoevsky, Gogol, Pelevin, or Villar, it does not matter how many books. There are a lot of people who will say that they are all great, a lot of people who will say that it's all trash, and there are many people who simply like some books and don't others. Therefore, writers don't write to win. Or I don't know, maybe there are people who write to become popular. I believe that writers write to speak their mind. To be honest, and as far as I understand, a writer writes books to make money. Writers earn money by writing books in order to keep on writing and to have the opportunity to continue writing. Okay, then here's a rude question. What is it like being a Russian-language writer in today's Ukraine, given the current situation in relations between the two countries? I must admit that it's very difficult. On the one hand, nobody recognizes you in all the possible ratings or contests that are conducted or held in Ukraine. So you don't exist. You can write and sell as many books as you want, but you don't exist. You seem to be there, but that's what I'm talking about. How were you received by Ukrainian writers? How was I received? I don't exist. By the way, I must mention that almost all the books by Pavlo Belyansky are immediately translated into Ukrainian. All two of them. Two is already a lot, I think. Speaking of all two, how many more are there going to be? What are your plans? At the moment, three books have been written and published. All of them are completely different and in no way connected to each other. What is also great is that all three were written and published within a year. That is a couple more years and you can reach the level of Daria Dontova. There is such a plan, because there is a detective story, a detective book called A Dentist Decides to Get Married. It is supposed to be a series. There is a big problem with television series in Ukraine. All of them are mostly the same. Some, let's say, a milkmaid arrives in the capital, struggles a lot and walks down a long path to find happiness, losing everything possible along the way – limbs, children, memory, etc. Then she meets a billionaire and the story has a happy ending. What can Pavlo Belansky offer to Ukrainian soap operas, which they lacked before? Well, there will be no milkmaid, and nobody is going to come to the capital. Everyone is already living in the city, and their lives are theoretically pretty decent. Basically, the detective component is built on… <laughs> a gardener who is also a killer, a female gardener. There is a successful man who has achieved quite a lot, a man who is, most importantly, not indifferent. 
That is why I think such a subject is quite relevant in the current Ukrainian realities. And he constantly gets into all kinds of sagas with his indifference. He's a kind of Fandorin turned professional dentist. What an interesting combination, a dental Fandorin. I like it. In short, I will offer viewers a story about how a person tries to build their happiness, way of life, meet their soulmate, start in a family and how he manages to do that with varying degrees of success. So you are well aware that ancient Greeks believed writers did not write anything themselves, that all kinds of muses spoke through them, and that a writer is just a mouthpiece used to deliver thoughts to people. How does it happen that an average everyday wood engraver becomes a professional writer? He cannot stop writing, he writes every day and grows into a writer. Let us try and figure out how that happens. Here's the question then. If you didn't know, Pavlo Belyansky, despite being quite a positive person, started working at a cemetery. His first book is called I worked at a cemetery. It is very autobiographical. You know, social media were in awe when they discovered a man who works in a cemetery and writes a book about his experience. Pavlo, tell me please, what made you take up writing in the cemetery among all those ghastly graves? Not used to work there, I'm still working there. How horrible, I don't want to know anything about that. But keep telling us your story about a man who puts up gravestones and writes books. That's Pavlo Belyansky. Nobody else in the world does that. It is said that a writer becomes a writer after they stop writing about themselves and their personal feelings and come up with characters that live their own lives. Yes, initially I wrote because I wanted to speak out. Such macabre stories from the cemetery came into to my head. There were a lot of them, and I needed to put them down on paper to convey them to someone. I started a blog, and people began reading it for some strange reason. I know why I wrote it for myself, but I don't know why they read it, because the stories are generally not for the faint-hearted. Pavlo, do you maybe have plans to give up the cemetery for living people, become a professional writer, earn good money, and bathe in the lap of luxury and fame well, maybe for fame all eternity? Theoretically possible here, but as for luxury and from writing, give us some more details from here on, please. Is it possible in modern Ukraine, especially if you are not some well-known writer whose books are sold in Europe and so on, to live and survive by writing books, not just living, but living the way a writer should live? I think that in our current conditions, the answer is a big no. Here's a specific question for you, Pavlo. There are conventional writers, let's call them that, and there are those organized by social media. It's a fairly new phenomenon in Ukraine that appeared after the Euromaidan and during the war, when people were just writing and then they became social writers. For comparison, Taras Shevchenko, Pushkin or Stendhal had no direct connections with their readers. When a conventional writer publishes a book, they can wait months or years for feedback. But it's much faster with social media. You write something and receive thousands of comments that are either positive or negative. Then you learn whether people like your works or not. It's this unsettling live communication with the readers. It's as if you're writing a book and it's only talking to you as opposed to the general public, which enjoys reading good literature. Please share with our viewing audience your opinion on this. Well, if you know how to use that to your advantage, it can increase the interest in your book, which is still in the process of writing. I use that actively. When I was writing my last book, I published bits and pieces on the Internet. They got a lot of likes and reposts. In the end, when the book was published, I posted stuff with the same hashtag. So it's possible to not just see if the book is finished but also have a look at what's inside it. I ended up with a group of people who were interested in this book in particular, who read those excerpts and truly liked them. And they were ready for its final release. There were. A hundred copies were ordered in advance. That's what it means to be a contemporary writer. Pre-publication orders and success. Actually, the competition between writers in social networks is very tough. 
enough. It's no longer about paperback editions that live from one book fair to another. It's here and now, comments after comments, fast and tough. Facebook writers usually post short, beautiful phrases with a lot of pathos and so on. Pashtet is different in that his creativity is not rooted in suffering, professional and passionate things. It is all easy and simple for him. And that is what's amazing about how a simple, ordinary man was doing his job, putting up gravestones in a cemetery, and then began writing books that amazed people with their simplicity and accessibility. There are books that you want to read, read and read some more. Thousands, tens of thousands of readers confirm that, believe me. A few words about yourself as a person, as a family man, about Pavlo Belyansky, who is not a writer, not Pashtet. Pashtet, as far as I understand, is a childhood nickname. Yes, a childhood nickname, that's correct. So tell me and our viewers something about your family. I cannot speak about my family without mentioning my main job. I was probably very lucky when I realized at some point that and that I could not live without writing. But still, writing is still an extracurricular activity for me. It can be turned into a profession. You always engage in it being slightly away from your family. You devote less time to your children, wife and family life in general. I remember a situation when some ideas came into my head during the day. I came home and I really wanted to turn those ideas into words. I sat down and started writing. At that point, my wife told our daughter, quiet now, let's go to another room, your daddy needs to work. Since then, I started treating what I'm doing like a job. Not because I don't like doing it, but because it's a job that brings me pleasure and a job that shapes my heart and soul. That is, you come to work and you're serious about tackling the challenge. Writing has turned into such a serious occupation for me. And it was my wife who inspired me and gave me drive to keep on clicking away. By the way, if you take a look at Pavlo's Facebook page, you will see that his daughter is a constant character in his short stories. She's a successful character. And let's say that Pavlo is very lucky, because his family told him, be a writer, we'll support you, we'll go to another room if we have to, we'll do anything for you, just keep on working. Yes, that's how it was. My daughter started elementary school this year. And they had a lesson in which the children had to tell about their parents' occupations. So my daughter said, my dad writes books in a cemetery. The teacher then retorted, I can't understand everything, but why in a cemetery? My daughter immediately replied, what do you mean why? He writes there so that nobody can bother him. Well, I'll be honest here, and I'm sure of my words, as I'm rarely wrong when it comes to such stories. Time will pass, and our students will hang the portrait of Pavlo Belyansky together with Marko Vovchok and Lesa Ukrainka. You will see for yourself. I'm convinced that will definitely happen. Thank you very much for your precious time.